Well, you, you know, we have seen some um, lower fares in the marketplace this year, but, but that was in the context of a time when fuel prices were actually rising earlier in the year. I, I think if you, um, if you look at what goes on in the marketplace, I think it is really more a combination of uh, supply and demand that makes a difference. And we, we saw some extra supply of capacity into uh, the Hawaii markets um, this year, and that's been what's what's driving some of the price action, I think. And you're getting some more just now, right? Southwest moving in. That's got to have you a little nervous. Well, you, you know, I, I think we're really um, prepared to compete. Our, our business is focused on serving the needs of travelers to, from, and within Hawaii. And I, we do that um, better than anyone else. It is uh, the entire focus of our business, and, and we're very prepared for our co competition wherever it comes from. You got, yeah. Go ahead. I, I was going to ask, I mean, you fly not just from the West Coast to Hawaii. You fly much more a broad network of flights than that. Do you see yourself expanding that network over the next few years, whether to Asia or into other domestic cities? Well, actually, if you look over the last um, eight or nine years, we've expanded a lot. Yes. Um, our, our revenue base is now about 50% between the U.S. mainland and Hawaii, uh, about uh, just under 25% from international markets, with Japan being our, our largest market, and then 25% flying within the Hawaiian Islands. So we've, we've got a network that really spans uh, where visitors to Hawaii uh, come from, and we're, we're well positioned to take advantage of opportunities where, wherever they occur. Peter? You guys have any problem with comfort animals these days? Delta just said it's banning them on long flights, and it seems like people are now showing up with all sorts of dogs and cats and lizards and what have you. Well, I, I think that's been something that uh, carriers throughout the industry have seen over the last couple of years. Uh, I did have the opportunity to, uh, to read a couple articles about Delta's announcement today. Um, we, we haven't had um, some of the, the worst problems with it, but I, I do think it is important that um, we, we manage that. And it would be, frankly, it's an area where it would be useful to have a little more clarity on um, some of the regulation on what can and cannot be on an airline. Um, service animals, um, we think, are, are absolutely important. They're trained yeah. um, to, to help people, and, and certainly we don't want to do anything um, to restrict people's ability to have service animals. But I, I think there is um, some examples of, of comfort animals uh, on airplanes that have gone a little too far. Yeah, comfort puppies. Uh, I mean, I love pu Don't get me wrong. Me I don't, I'm going to get emails on this. But, uh, you know, I, it, it does feel like you need some, some, some governance there, uh, obviously. So uh, if fuel prices stay where they are, is that going to be great for you or what? I, I think fuel prices where they are is, is quite a manageable um, level and y you know we we've, we've had prices higher earlier this year over the last couple of years prices have been lower um, what we really like as an airline is for it to be uh, predictable and not to have swings um, you know giant swings one direction or the other it gives us a little bit more of an ability to you hedge uh, to plan do you hedge a lot or not, not we do hedge um, we do hedge we hedge with um, call options to, to uh, allow us to participate on the downside of fuel prices right. uh, but give us some protection if uh, if fuel prices go up very quickly in the short term.